Seven times, Terry McCullough confirmed that he thinks parents should have no say in their child's education. I want you to think about that. You have to pay for it all, right? Parent involvement uh, is actually a very good thing. And when I was on a school board 40 years ago, whatever it is now, um, we always talked about parental involvement, but not here because Terry McAuliffe is bought and paid for by uh, the teachers' unions, the educational establishment, and he's relying very, very heavily on them. Go. Glenn Youngkin's taking my words out of context. Something you mentioned in Tuesday's debate is um, you said you don't believe parents should be telling schools what to teach. What did you mean by that? Well, first of all, parents should be telling schools that they want their teachers to be vaccinated. Do you think parents should have a say in the curriculum? You don't want parents coming in in every different school jurisdiction. You alluded to parents staying out of this. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're understanding you correctly. Uh, what is your stance on that as far as what school agendas have to say for the kids? First of all, this is determined by the State Board of Education and local school boards. And that's where it should be. Do you still stand by your position that parents should not tell the schools what they should teach? You do not want 25 parents picking books. call us reply. We have a board of ed and we have local school boards who make the decisions about teaching. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools. Them. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. I love the music in the background, too. It goes up to crescendo. And he means it. He absolutely means it. He is a disaster. He is a Joe Biden wannabe. I want you to think about that. And Joe Biden's coming into Virginia, into one of the most Democrat areas, Arlington County, Northern Virginia, to campaign for uh, McAuliffe because McAuliffe can't stand on his own two feet. I mean, if you're bringing in Biden, I mean, good Lord. Now, why independents and Democrats may vote for Yunkin? This is CBS News. Go. All right. In what could be a referendum on the president's agenda and popularity, Virginians head to the polls next week to elect a new governor. President Biden won that state by 10 points, but Democrat Terry McAuliffe and Republican challenger Glenn Youngkin are locked in a tight race, and independence could be a key factor. So we went to the state to find out what's driving people to the polls. Kendra Lee is a prime example of why this race is so close. I cried when Hillary Clinton lost. If someone told me that I would ever be not considering voting for a Democrat, I would have thought like you were crazy. And yet, the mother of two voted for Republican Glenn Youngkin. After a year of virtual learning and now mask mandates in schools, she trusts him more with her kids' education. What is it about what Youngkin is saying he'll do that appeals to you? I don't think he would have as much governmental restrictions. I think that he would leave it more in terms of local control. Friday! Woo! Youngkin, a multi-millionaire businessman, has wooed voters. All right, hold on a second. McAuliffe is a multi-millionaire, too. He's been known as a bag man for decades, so let's get that straight. Go ahead. By making schools a central focus of the race, holding Parents Matter rallies where he hammers McAuliffe over something he said at a debate. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. This movement is being led by parents who are saying, no, I am the one who gets to decide what's best for my children. Youngkin has tapped into concern over race and gender issues in schools, and he's opposed to mask and vaccine mandates. So what is it about what's happening in schools and those mandates that you don't like? I feel like I know what's best for my family better than a politician does. Independent Robert Clark also voted for President Biden, but calls this decision a toss-up. So you support President Biden, but you may vote for a Republican. I may. If a Republican wins the governor's race, what message will that send? That there is some tepidness around the president's agenda. Um, there are a lot of concerns about some of the choices he's made. And there's concern among some Democrats that a loss here would be a preview of what's to come in next year's midterms. McAuliffe is trying to make this a referendum on the former president. He is a Trump acolyte. He says Youngkin has a far right agenda, citing caught on tape comments about abortion. When I'm governor, we can start going on offense. But as a campaign topic, sadly, that in fact won't win my independent votes. We cannot go back. He is against gay marriage. He is against a woman's right to choose. Now let's let's slow down. 
First of all, he's not against gay marriage. He's a moderate Republican. That's what he is. They're trying to paint him into some corner. Number two, on abortion. The Democrats do this every election cycle. Uh, first of all, it is strange to me that women in the suburbs are so committed to abortion. It's just a weird thing. All that said, there's not a governor in any state that can end abortion without the approval of the Supreme Court. That's the nature of how this works. I don't agree with it. It has nothing to do with my analysis of it. It is just the way it works now, unfortunately, even in Texas. So I put a bet out there last week on public radio for the whole world to hear, including the McAuliffe campaign, I've said, I will bet you $1 million if Youngkin is elected, he cannot end all abortions, which is what he has said on the trail. Youngkin's going to end all abortions. All ab I said, okay, a $1 million. If he's elected, that that's not going to happen because it can't happen because he can't do it. Uh, I haven't heard back. Go ahead. The choice of swing voters like Robert will ultimately decide who wins. I mean, I would like to imagine that my vote is the, is the deciding one, but it won't be. I'm just going to go out and vote for who I believe in. And we'll be watching in that bellwether race. Oh, good. Uh, but anyway, the Democrats keep cheating and lying. They're still using those videos, the Kamala Harris videos, in these churches. And uh, the former governor of Virginia, Douglas Wilder, the first black governor of Virginia, and so far the last gov black governor of Virginia, he does not like McAuliffe, and he attacked Kamala Harris said, what are you going to do? You're going to get all these churches in trouble now with the Internal Revenue Service when this election's all over? And he's complained that the Democrat Party has done nothing for blacks in the state of Virginia. He says, you know, the university I went to is in collapse. It's deteriorating. And we have a governor now. We had a governor before. All Democrats. And they haven't done a damn thing. Meanwhile, what did Trump do? with these historically black colleges and universities. Historically black colleges, they, they call them HBCUs. What did he do? He ensured a stream of funding for these colleges for years to come, for many years to come. Biden didn't do that, Obama didn't do that. He supported school choice, Obama opposes school choice. So these guys running around with Stacey Abrams and so forth, Obama doesn't have any connection with people in real communities anymore. I mean, even his library is controversial. He's building it there on a uh, park in the middle of the city. Uh, the community is heavily Latino. They're objecting. They've brought lawsuits. He doesn't give a damn. He's going to build a big monument to himself. It's just incredible. All right, so let's take a look at this. The Yunkin campaign, they really hammer uh, McAuliffe, another YouTube. Let's check it out. Go. A page from the 1984 medical school yearbook of Democratic Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia, showing a photo of two people, one in blackface, one in a KKK hood and robe. On Friday evening, it came out that Ralph indeed was, he said, he was in the picture. Friday night when I talked to him, there was a question if he was in the photo. At that point, for me, morally the only right thing to do, and it was hard. I called Ralph on Friday night. He made a horrible mistake Friday night when he didn't know if he was in or not. If it's not him in the photo, which is what he's saying, why do you still think he should resign? Well, first he said it was Friday night. I do not know if it's not you. Oh, we know in Virginia. Instinctively, you know if you put black paint on your face. You know if you put a hood on. Well, he didn't do Ku Klux Klan. It's now come out he wasn't either one of them. But it doesn't matter what, whether he was in the photo or not in the photo at this point. Listen, even if it had been him in the black face, you know, it was a dumb mistake 40 years ago. But this is more than dumb, this is racist. It doesn't matter how Terry McCall feels. That photo that was in that yearbook was so offensive to the African-American community. Had he told me Friday night when I talked to him, I never would ask for him to resign. But, you know, we moved on. I grew up in New York, and, and all fairness, folks, I, I didn't know what black place was. I knew at a young age, black face, 1985, it, it, you just didn't do it. If you're making an excuse for this, saying, oh, th this is what happened when this person was young, you need to check yourself. That is a killer. I hope they run that ad all over the state. It is interesting, though, that ad would not, would not upset Obama or Harris 
or Stacey Abrams, or Lightweight, I mean Lightfoot, who is in the state, and so forth. All these black politicians, because it's Democrat Party first. I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. It's, it's a power thing. For all this and much more, sign up for Levin TV.